Hey everyone, Chang here and welcome to my channel. Now, for the bare minimum algebra series video today, we are gonna talk about the order of operations. Basically, it is an agreed upon step-by-step -step order in how we would go about solving the problems to prevent miscommunication. So, fairly simple. We first start off with parentheses. Every time we look at an expression or an equation and we want to solve it, we want to work with the parentheses or brackets, right? That's another way for people to differentiate instead of putting a bunch of parentheses together and they're trying to figure out which parentheses belong to which, people will put often put parentheses and brackets so that you can easily differentiate. The next one is you solve all the exponents if possible, right? Exponents are the numbers or variables with the little numbers on top, right? Then you do multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Now, that's step by step, but here's the key difference. Multiplication and division, if you happen to see them in the same problem, you're gonna go from left to right. It's not all multiplication first and all division second all the time, right? If it happens to be a division, then multiplication where division's on the left first, then you would actually carry out the division first, then multiplication. So this is from left to right. Same with addition and subtraction. So there is the order of operation. Let's look at it in an example. All right, so let's look at this first example. We have three times the quantity of five minus two plus six times one. Now, based on the order of operation, first and foremost, we're gonna look at the parentheses. So there's the parentheses. So we do everything inside the parentheses first. So basically now we have three times and inside is gonna be five minus two, which is gonna be three plus six times one. So that's our parentheses. Are there exponents? No, none. So then we would go with multiplication. Now there's two multiplications here. There's one right here and one right here. So in that case, three times three is nine and we have the plus sign and the six times one is just six. Now, do we have divisions? No. Do we have addition or subtraction? We do have addition. So this is just the final step. Nine plus six, which gives us 15. Let's look at another example. All right, so here's our second example with slightly a little more so that you can see it all in action, right? First and foremost, once again, it's parentheses. All right, there is a parentheses, here it is. So we're gonna solve inside the parentheses. Four minus one is three. So we have three with the parentheses still. And then now we have the rest of the problem. The next one is exponents. Yes, there is an exponent in this one, so it's right there. So that means three squared, which is three times three. That means we have nine, right? So there's our exponent. Let's just make sure I highlight that, right? So it's gonna be nine minus two times three. Now, we've gone through parentheses, we've gone through all the exponent. The next one is multiplication and division. There is it right here. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky, right? Is it a negative two times three or is it just two times three? In this case, actually it's just two times three. So it's gonna be nine minus six. Often, that's why it's you gotta be careful with certain problems in the way they write it. This one originally is, is subtract two times three, right? If you wanna be clear, and that's why certain books, certain problems written are considered poorly written problems because there's always still room for misunderstanding. This one is one of them. I just want to show you the case. But yes, here you have two times three is six. Therefore, now you have the last thing, which is your subtraction, nine minus six, which is going to be three. And there is your answer for the second example. All right, so here's a little thing that I do want to point out. This is, I don't want it to be misconstrued, but the order of operation is extremely useful, extremely handy, but it's not the end all be all, right? Math does open room for creativity. You can manipulate certain expression and equation in different ways that make your life a little easier. So for example, here's a standard problem that you can solve, right? Yes, the standard step, you can subtract 49 on both sides and then divide by seven from the X and then get whatever it is, right? But you can always be creative, right? You can always 
manipulate things around. And in this case, as long as you're not breaking any rules, you don't really have to strictly follow the order of operations. So for example, here, I'm going to take out the seven, I'm factoring out seven, all of a sudden it's going to be X plus seven equals seven. And then we're going to divide by seven on both sides. And all of a sudden you have X plus seven equals one. And all of a sudden it's a lot easier to solve than going through the other steps, right? So yes, order of operation is extremely important. It is mainly used for, instead of solving equation, most likely mainly used for just simplifying expressions, right? If you can use it for simplifying expressions, basically simplifying one side of the equation or the other side of the equation, and this is the rule to follow. But if you want to be creative, as long as you're not breaking any rules, there is multiple ways of going about to solve a problem. So don't let this be the sort of tombstone, the, the jail, the bars that is preventing you from being creative. All right, so there you have it. This is the order of operations, fairly simple. It is an agreed upon order so that mathematicians, when they're solving problems, are communicating effectively. This is extremely useful for problems that are poorly written, like the second example that I present you. Now, fa fairly simple to remember it, at least in English. I'm sure other languages have their own ways of memorizing it. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, parentheses, exponent, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction based on the first letter of each, right? Also known as PEMDAS. Now, for multiplication and division, don't forget, left and right, addition and subtraction, left and right, right? It's not all strictly multiplication, then division, or all strictly addition, and then subtraction. Now, lastly, this is a sort of agreed upon terms, however, when you encounter certain problems, it doesn't mean that you cannot be creative, right? You can manipulate certain expression and equation to make your life a little easier. As long as you're not breaking any fundamental rules of algebra or arithmetic, you're basically good to go. So hopefully, once again, this is a fairly simple video. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you in the next video.